I feel like in a lot of my builds so far, I've been kind of trying to lean away from the fundamental concept of the game, which is, uh, you know, city buildings within an ocean. Uh, I'll often cover the whole map with land, or I'll build, like in my last video, a big beehive um, kind of floating in the air, or in my Heaven, Hell, and Alien series, I did different layers kind of hovering off the ground, but I really haven't built anything yet that really fundamentally connects with kind of, I think, the intentions of the game, um, which is the kind of buildings and the water. So in this video, I really want to emphasize the fact that there's a big water feature here, a really nice ocean. Um, and I think what I want to do is build kind of like a ocean colony or something like that. I'm imagining a place that's so far offshore that it needs its kind of own economy and own internal community to keep it going. Um, so maybe based around an oil rig or some kind of fishery type of place. Um, and then obviously it's connected to the economy of the mainland of wherever it's here. So to start off, I think I'm going to do some research. I usually just don't do any research and kind of play it by ear, but in this one I want to kind of learn more about how oil rigs work. So let's do some quick Googling. So it seems like oil rigs have a big concrete column going down the middle, which then goes deep into the... Actually, no, that's not true. So it looks like there are lots of different types of oil rigs. There's some that are floating. Um, there's some that are moored to the bottom of the ocean floor, um, but all of them have kind of a pipe going down from the center area deep into the water. Um, because there's so much diversity, I think it might be best to go off of an image. So let me get a good oil rig image. Do people live on oil rigs? Okay, so they do have, they do have people who work and live on the oil rig, so they don't commute. Okay, um, it looks like that might be only for the, the big ones that are really far offshore. So not every oil rig, but I think it's more interesting to make it. So our, our oil rig will, will be that way. Um, let's see, how can we do this? Now, oil rigs have probably the most distinctive feature of an oil rig is all the columns, all the different steel columns that are kind of make it a very industrial looking kind of ugly shape and the way that you make columns in this game is you have an exterior corner floating above the ground so here this house for example has four exterior corners each exterior corner will make a column going down now if you make an interior corner that does not make a column so if i make a house that looks like this that's got like a let's see see this interior corner on the inside of this corner on the inside of this elbow here this does not make a column so i need to maximize the amount of exterior corners that i have in this build um, oil rigs are also usually rectilinear so i can't really build them in a place like this that has kind of a weird abstract shape i want it to be pretty much as as square as possible so let's start out in this area um, I guess one corner of the rig, one corner of the rig can be here. Yeah, here. And then how far should it go down? That's probably far enough. And then I don't want to make it white. I should probably make it a more kind of ugly color. Like, um, I mean, there are really no ugly colors in this game apart from this kind of ugly shade of green right here, but I don't know how realistic it is for an oil rig to be painted like that. Maybe the bottom, so maybe the bottom layer can kind of be this grayish. It's grayish and I can kind of pretend it's concrete or something. So that can kind of come across like this. And then turn the corner like this. If all the rays are floating for the most part, then it kind of wouldn't really make sense for there to be a lot of concrete on them just because that's a very heavy material. It would make sense for oil rigs to be made out of metal. 
So, um, so yeah, we'll just pretend that this is kind of a grayish metal color. And then on the interior, that's where we have kind of a central column going down, and that goes directly into the ocean. That's kind of what the what what the central spine structure of the oil rig is. Um, and then let's fill out this area here. Okay, so now we can make the spine kind of go a little bit up, and then maybe let's make the living quarters next. So these are going to be kind of ugly, to be honest. Um, it's probably pretty crowded. They just have like bunks or something. Um, that can be kind of a long, maybe this wall here. And then maybe a cantilever over the ocean just so you have multiple, kind of makes more corners and it also makes more sense. There's a lot of cantilevers on an oil rig. Um, they're very top heavy cause just because they want to have maximal space underneath to account for waves and splashing and stuff, I think. So, okay, so if that's kind of where people live, then maybe I can have offices in a slightly different color, maybe a yellow. I like these kind of really bold colors or really muted colors because the really bold colors, they can be kind of like hazard type things, you know, it's painted a certain way so that boats and things like that know, can identify the oil rig and, and know not to crash into it. Um, and then the muted colors are really good if I want to make the neutral, basic building materials that are just totally unpainted, unadorned with anything. I think that the kind of sophisticated colors, like this plum color, really doesn't have a place on an oil rig. So we're deleting that. Okay, and then um, part of the oil rig is probably a big oil like processing plant or something, or a big pump or something like that. So that can probably be uh, just a huge, structure kind of asymmetrical maybe it's also cantilevered off of the off of the floor of this oil rig area and that's just like a big tower over here like that okay and then maybe on the corner there can be some kind of uh watchtower i don't know like the equivalent of like a lighthouse except it's this is not the highest point on the thing on the on the tower it just kind of is a watch out point for everything else um, and come to think of it, I really should avoid roofs because roofs are not what you would have in an oil rig. They, you know, couldn't care less whether it looks kind of like nice and old looking or whether it looks new and kind of ugly. So let's make these irregular so that it deletes the, the, the peaked roofs. Um, I think that's going to go like that. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Let me, uh, let me go back to my oil rig reference image. Okay, so it seems like something else that oil rigs have are cranes and big kind of metal, big tall metal structures. So I think I should probably stop building the kind of core, kind of solid buildings and instead work on just making really tall structures that will cast down these columns to make them kind of simulate an oil oil rig. Is that too tall? No, we'll, we'll see. Um, I come to think of it, that should be a different color. That can be... Uh, it could be another yellow, just because even if it's colorful, it's probably not too varied. Okay, and then we can do another one. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Probably shouldn't have that. Maybe if I made this one further down. Okay, there we go. Now we have some more irregularities. Um, and then we can have a different section that's maybe this more neutral, or maybe it's blue. Yeah, we'll make it blue, primary colors. And this can kind of be like a walkway or something, something kind of longer like that. You know what? I should have more of the residential part. A lot of the oil rigs I saw in Google Images had multiple layers anyway. Um, so this one can too. Hmm. Let's go back to my images. See, I wish I could build the metal structures without needing a, a, a livable structure at the top. You know, I wish I could just build them in a way where there's just these big metal frames everywhere. Oh, wow. These North Sea ones are big. I think I should really invest in my oil structure. I think I should kind of make it the main feature of my whole build. Um, 
This is great, but honestly, it's kind of small, and a lot of oil rigs are really, really large. So, um, yeah, so let's just make this, let's just make this guy a lot bigger. Okay. Now I think we're talking. Maybe I should go higher off the ground if I really want to emphasize the oil rig part of it, you know? Because I think that's a pretty good shape. Oil rigs are usually aren't very long. They're kind of boxy and square. I mean, this is the, the probably the, the boxiest I can go in this game. Um, so that seems legit right there. Hmm. So now it also seems like a lot of oil rigs are actually multiple parts. So they're kind of different levels to them. But I think I still want to make this higher. So let's make it maybe four blocks higher. I really want to emphasize the verticality of it. And if it's going to be this wide, it's got to also be really, really vertical too. Now, should I keep that lower level or should I leave it or should I build it up higher instead? Um, I think we'll delete it for now, and then if I want to rebuild it later, I can always do that. So this tube right here, this kind of thin column, um, I think if it were a different scenario and I was making a much smaller oil rig the way I was earlier, then this would not nearly be thin enough to represent a pipe for oil. But now that my rig is so large, I think that it actually can. I think it's um, I think it's a pretty good good size. Maybe the only change I would make is I would move it toward the center, just because that is um, yeah, just because that's kind of where the pipe on an oil rig I think usually is. It's right in the middle of the rig structure. And then let's fill this in. Okay, so now that is the fundamental base layer. Now I think I can start to build kind of these other sections. Um, I think one really distinctive feature of an oil rig that I've seen, like one of these really big ones in the North Sea, I think, is kind of, it looks almost like an office building where it's just one really rectilinear, big, honking kind of corner piece that's full of whatever cabins for the oil rig workers to live in, it has offices, it has, you know, break rooms and stuff, um, whatever is necessary to kind of keep the whole facility running. So that's what this corner is going to be. And what I could do is maybe make them one floor apart from each other, just so it doesn't look like I'm building, so it actually looks like something that's really made up of a lot of different components instead of Kind of just one big massive mega kind of structural thing and i wonder maybe to maximize the amount of columns i can add corners in the back like this um yeah maybe for a little bit further apart yeah like that so that when you're looking at it you can see you can see a lot of corners in the building okay You know, maybe these should be double height. It's kind of a lot of empty space for how much non-empty space there is. Let's see what that would look like. Um, so if it's double height, this would be filled in down here. Or you know what? No, I'm going to keep it how it is, just so there's maximum uh, maximum variation. Okay. So if that's that section, then I can kind of make another, maybe more obscure section right next to it. Like a big white kind of towery thing. Not the largest structure on the whole ship, but certainly something. Kind of isn't clear what the purpose is. In an ideal world, it would have no windows, but it's really fine that it has windows. Um, and maybe that can kind of jut out a little bit because I shouldn't have too much of the buildings 
conforming to the shape of the platform, you know? Because on a real oil rig, things are kind of just haphazardly tacked on in different places. It's not really a big concern for aesthetics. Maybe that can come down a little bit too. And the benefit of that is that it just makes more columns, which I always need. Perfect. Okay. So maybe it should go a little bit higher too. Great. So now what's next? Maybe I can, um, maybe right behind these buildings, I can have a column, kind of big, another big boxy shape, just so the fact that it's transparent going all the way through, the fact that there's no floor here is less obvious, less kind of see-through, um, so that it kind of looks like there's a jumble of machinery or something behind that layer. Yeah, and maybe this can be some kind of operator's facility or something. Um, and so there can be a direct connection between this and the next door apartments. No, I don't want these roofs. Definitely not. Perfect. Maybe this, this can be on stilts too, just to give it a little bit more precariousness. You know, the whole, this platform doesn't need to, need to be this um, solid. I can probably have a lot of holes. Yeah, because a real oil rig probably just has a lot of walkways rather than one big flat plane area. And then if I want the columns to go all the way through, I can really make this hole a lot bigger. Just so the holes go all the way, the, the columns go all the way to the bottom. Awesome. Great. So that's good for now for that. Um, Star shapes, I don't really want that on this section of the build, just be, on this build, just because it's got to be more rectilinear than, than kind of that shape. Like, I love how this is a right angle right here. Um, and then at the center of the rig, this is where I can build, like, a big tower. Um, kind of like a lighthouse-y looking thing, just a big kind of honking, really in-your-face building. The lower level can just be white, just kind of a basic painted white color. Um, and then as it gets higher, I can add some stripes. Now, maybe blue stripes or maybe red stripes. I'm not really sure. Um, red was already used on that section of the build, but I think it's still okay to use red just because I'm going to be using other colors in other sections. So it's not super important that I um, provide a variety right now, just because I think I'm going to get it later. And then, you know... This is probably too solid. I think I should probably add maybe like balconies like this, but I don't love the fact that it creates, um, I don't like that it creates a, a roof here. I kind of wish it would create a flat area. So what if I had a corner like that? Okay, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, like that. And then maybe I, I can have a cantilever over here on this side. Or, you know, maybe this can be the building that has two two layers and then one layer of empty and then two layers and then one layer of empty and then maybe one layer empty, one layer empty like that, just so it has a, a different pattern from this over here. Okay, so that's two layers and then we got to go empty and then two layers and then empty and then one layer. Okay, perfect. And maybe at this point I can also get thinner. Yeah, that makes sense. Because it shouldn't be so blocky. I mean, I should at least have some kind of structural, you know, normal structural kind of intuition where you have it get smaller as it goes up. Um, even though it's an oil rig and it's made of a lot of really strong materials, it still abides by some rules of gravity, you know? And then let's go higher on that. Maybe now I can start the one layer on, one layer off pattern. So that's one layer on, one layer off, and then one layer on again. And then let's make it smaller, one, one, one more shape smaller. Should I have it go smaller in the same direction or should I have it in kind of a different direction? Um, I think I should have a different direction. Oh wait, I don't want to do that. I wanted to go one higher and then make a box, yeah. Hmm, taller? Maybe one level taller, just to 
make it nice. And then that layer can be red, yeah. Maybe orange, actually. No, red. So it's consistent. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Now, what are the other features of an oil rig I can add? Um, you know, actually, I don't love the fact that there's a roof on this, so I'm going to make this in a regular shape. Maybe I can have it come out like a, kind of like a crane a little bit. The problem is that, okay. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's a very industrial kind of weird looking, weird looking shape. Um, maybe, maybe you can have more of them, have more of them kind of coming off at an angle like this. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I know that the crane should probably go over the water, but um, that might be a little bit far. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not far for this one. Let's go over the water. This one. Almost. Oh, yep. There we go. Over the water. Perfect. Um, and then maybe this can have a support. And I can build a support just by going down one on this red layer. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, now it's starting to look like a real oil rig. Um, maybe I can add another layer to this too, over here. Okay, and then now over here, maybe kind of a low, a low like management building kind of hugging along this wall here. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, maybe three wide, just so it's kind of a flat, fat, low structure. Also avoids creating a roof too, which is nice. Um, and then should that cantilever? Yeah, why not? So let's delete this area. And then maybe another blue tower right next to it, just to expand, expand the space a little bit. Perfect. Um, what else? What else would a tower like this have? If you've got kind of a residence area over here, a lot of the more management style type people maybe work in that building. Um, this is something, this is something, I just need something to be more structural, you know? Maybe I can build a floating layer kind of mid, mid structure and then with a lot of holes and that will make a ton of columns to kind of fill in this zone right here. Yeah, let's do that. Um, and then that one, that can be this kind of darker color. Uh, and then actually I should probably have this connect to a tower right here just to make sure it's still connected when I build this cantilever layer. Because if I build the cantilever layer, what I might do is just link this tower to this layer and not actually create something that looks very structurally supportive. And then maybe that can support another layer up top. Um, it's one, one level above this structure. Perfect. Perfect. Um, maybe a smaller crane coming off the side here, just because these bigger ones, maybe they don't have to be so high. This is for kind of smaller, less heavy duty things. Um, so those can, those can, this can still be red. Um, I can have it alternate red and white again. And then do I want to avoid that? Yeah, I think I want to avoid that shape, so. Okay, maybe maybe we can create an upper level. As I mentioned earlier, boiler rigs are often not just totally contained on one flat layer. There's kind of more layers to them. So I think that for this layer here, I can remove this section and I can have the, the floor base plate be raised up a little bit higher. You know, I think I'm thinking too, I think I'm thinking too much in the realm of buildings. I got to get more creative as to imagining what these different blocks represent. So even though I'm building a big chunk of something right here, this doesn't necessarily have to be a traditional building. Maybe I can make this kind of like a storehouse or something or a big tank for oil. Um, even though it's not cylindrical, as you might expect kind of a traditional storehouse structure to be. 
I can still kind of imagine if it itself is not a big tank, maybe it's a square shape that houses a bunch of big tanks. Even more. Let's go even higher. Awesome. Um, I really like the shape of that. I like how it adds a lot of bulk to the shape of this building. Maybe I, you know, I can take away this pier over here, this kind of cantilevered crane shape type of thing. Um, I don't really think it adds a whole lot to my structure. Now, the only problem with that is it creates, yeah, it creates this tower, or it creates that roof, which I guess if you zoom out, you really can't see that well. And maybe it does make sense for the little shed or whatever it is at the top of this structure to have a little roof, just because that's the part that's absolutely the most exposed to the elements. Um, so whoever's manning that area, you know, kudos to them, but they need protection. Um, okay, next, um, I think I can build another one of these actually. Um, maybe kind of up against, hmm, because I do like how many columns there are here. Um, no, maybe, I, yeah, maybe I can turn this into one solid, one solid structure rather than this hovering thing. Yeah. So for a second there, I accidentally didn't record. Um, but basically what I did was I built this walkway around the side of the oil rig. I thought that looking at it from this angle, it looked kind of too obvious exactly what the different blocks were. And when you look at an oil rig, it's kind of a lot of unusual shapes that you're not really used to seeing, and it's kind of hard to put them together. Um, and I thought that it was too easy to kind of look at these and say, oh, this is a, you know, one structure and this is something else, and this is another thing. So I thought that adding this exterior walkway would kind of abstract the way that the whole structure looks. Um, I wonder what it would look like if I deleted that section on the bottom. Um, because I think that it kind of adds to the general vibe of it being a platform, like it really kind of creates a solid base. But on the other hand, there's no real purpose for that section because all the bulk is kind of hovering above it. So maybe instead of deleting it, I should just add more buildings onto the bottom here. Yeah, I think that's good. That's a good idea. So we'll do that. Let me quickly just do this, replace it with white, and then I'll add a white building right above it. And when I say building, I don't necessarily mean building. I just mean some kind of really boxy industrial kind of structural thing. And then just to make sure it doesn't create a solid roof, I've got to add a little nib on the side and then it'll be flat. Perfect. And then I can do another one down here. And that one can be, I've used a lot of the same colors. So I think that maybe to mix it up, I should use yellow. I noticed in one of the other, in one of the other townscaper builds I saw, or excuse me, one of the other oil rig builds I saw, there were, these yellow supports going all the way down into the water. I don't know if I want to go all the way down to the water, but at least maybe some yellow at the corners could create some supports underneath them, and then that could imply some kind of different material for the structure going down there. So if I build like this, this bright kind of neon-y, a little bit ugly looking yellow color, hope it doesn't make a roof perfect. Um, and then that can go right underneath here. corner underneath this section here. You know, it should probably go directly underneath this building just because that is, you know, a big object and it kind of wouldn't make sense to be just supporting this tiny little pier. Um, so yeah, under this building here. Um, 
Now just some final things. I think I might want to make this more solid here by adding some kind of chunky kind of chunky structure down there. So maybe another red thing. Maybe this could be another like living residence kind of layer. It's funny, I just said I want to build something chunky, and then I built like the least chunky thing that I've built yet, but at least it's something. Maybe that can kind of continue in the back, just to imply there's more going on behind the scenes, behind this kind of facade area. And then I'll add a little bit of a cantilever just to make it have a no roof. Awesome. So I think that's going to be, uh, actually, the way let me build this further out. Because now the pier is there. Got to have, yeah, perfect. And maybe kind of nearby, I can build a smaller one, just so this is not totally solo. So let me go back to the grid, see what a good square space available is. Wow, I really took up a lot of space on this grid. Um, I'm going to go further in this direction. Yeah, yeah. So maybe, what if I made it like this, kind of around, so it was a three-sided, actually that makes no sense, why would a oil rig be three-sided? Um, and then this one can have a different color scheme. Maybe this one can be more blue. Or what if it wasn't even an oil rig? What if it was something else, like a fishing fishing apparatus or stuff of some kind? Um, yeah, okay. So maybe what I could do is have some kind of structure at the end here, and then see along this line where it kind of waves, but it's still straight. I can have a row of what I imagine are like little underwater kind of fishing net type things. Um, I don't really know what it's called to have a farm, an ocean farm in the middle of the ocean. I know that there's a thing called kelp farming, which is actually a pretty environmentally friendly way of, of getting uh, calories and vegetables just by eating kelp that's produced in one of these farms. Um, but because it's right next to an oil drill, it's probably fish because at least those are coming in from somewhere else. If it's plants, those things are just constantly getting fed whatever junk is coming off this oil rig. So those are probably not very healthy. Okay, so maybe the, the I can make pathways. Or you know, no, they probably get around this thing by boat. So um, these just have little houses basically on these little corners just to keep the nets that are underwater stable. Um, these are probably all floating as well. Uh, and maybe they're not actually houses to physically go into. They're just kind of buoys or structures like that. Um, okay, what about this direction? Can I build further over here? No, I think that's pretty much the furthest I can go. Um, and considering that the this pattern goes further in this direction, but it ends there, I can probably make more of these kind of buoy shapes in this direction. Perfect. So that's kind of the line that the fishing community would take. Um, should it go in this direction too? No. Let's keep it like this for now. And then whoever lives on this little kind of, I don't know what you'd call it, this little farm, I don't know this little uh, business, they can live in kind of a small, small house like this. A small house that's just like that right there. But then there is a place where boats can come in and dock maybe and take the fish away somewhere else. Um, so this isn't a solid structure. It doesn't go all the way to the ground. It's still floating. But still, boats will be able to come in through here and then load whatever fish these people have stored, and the fish can be stored in a silo. Obviously, fish stored in a silo is not a very uh, good way of storing things, especially not for a long period of time. But let's kind of so let's make the silo smaller because the fish can't be in there for very long, and the boats that take them probably have to come pretty frequently to get these small loads, just so they don't, um, just so they don't rot basically yeah perfect oh and the fact that i built that means that there's a staircase right here which is exactly what i need for these people um perfect okay so those people live there and they kind of have their own little business and maybe i can have 
I wish I could do a wind farm, um, but like an offshore wind farm, but um, you can't really do that in this game because the distinctive feature of a wind farm is the blades of the whatever they call propellers or rotors or whatever, and I can't make those in this game. So something else I could do is probably like a solar farm, but I don't know how I would simulate the solar panels themselves. Let's see. What else would be in the middle of the ocean? Just in the middle of absolutely nowhere. Or at least maybe not totally in the middle of nowhere because if it really was in the middle of nowhere, they wouldn't have this fishing thing here. Yeah, so it's not totally in the middle of nowhere. It's probably a couple miles, maybe 20 miles or something off, off the shore. Um, maybe, okay, this is kind of a crazy idea. Maybe there, there's like an old ship or something, like the Titanic, that's underneath the water here, and it's like a tourist attraction or something. And so above, there's a touristy looking kind of building thing, and then some kind of elevator or submarine or something that'll take you underwater so you can see the Titanic that's down there. But on the top is an infrastructure for people who are visiting, basically. Um, so we'll do that, yeah. Let's make this museum. What color should it be? Well, first it's got to have a pier. Because there's probably big boats of tourists that come in wanting to go down and take pictures next to the front of the ship or whatever and pretend they're in the Titanic movie. So this pier is like this. One boat in the time. There's one big tourist boat that comes in, drops tourists off, picks up the previous group, and then takes them off. So that boat can kind of come in here, and then there is immediately going to be a staircase going up to the museum area. So let's go this further out like this. Um, and then up here, we'll have the museum. And that can be on, you're looking on stilt, actually. So this section will be like this. I thought that that would make a staircase. Oh, that's gotta go like this, maybe? Yeah. Okay. So there's like a little front area, and then immediately the museum starts. And it should, what color should the museum be? The Titanic is white with a red stripe. So maybe the building can kind of be, I mean, this is a really kind of tacky concept, but um, the building can kind of follow the same color scheme. So it'll be white on top, and a red layer underneath. And that should actually be able to probably be bigger too. And then from there, then you can go down into like a kind of a, I wouldn't call it a courtyard because it's in the middle of the ocean, but a kind of an area that's closed off. And at the center of that is whatever the elevator or the scuba diving submarine path to the Titanic. Um, and maybe there's a net around it so that nobody can go anywhere other than just that perfectly vertical line. Um, yeah. So maybe it begins underneath here. Just so people don't get lost, because you wouldn't want a group of like scuba divers or submarine people or whatever to go try to find the ship and then suddenly they're under the oil rig and they're getting like doused with oil. And obviously this isn't the Titanic, because in real life, first of all, nobody knows where the Titanic is, I think, except for like James Cameron. Or maybe that's just the fact that I'm making up in my head, I don't know. But I feel like nobody knows where it is, except the people who found it, who were making that movie, and then they didn't tell anyone. So nobody knows where it is, I'm kind of imagining. And so there wouldn't be a museum there. And even if people did know where it was, they probably still wouldn't build a museum, because isn't it like a... UNESCO World Heritage Site or something? Well, anyway, there's not a museum there. Nobody knows where it is. There's definitely not an oil rig right next to it. That would also not fly with UNESCO or whoever keeps track of that kind of thing. And plus, the big fishing thing right next to it, I don't know, too much of a coincidence that the one place where there's this big in the middle of the ocean fishery happens to be right next to where the Titanic is. Hmm. Yeah, so a lot of things about this don't make much sense. But these are the only three things I can think of that are in the middle of the ocean. There's got to be more stuff. What else could there be? Hmm. I mean, there's boats in the middle of the ocean, like there's cruise ships and stuff, but 
I don't like the idea of making a boat in Townscaper just because it's such a it's a moving object and so it wouldn't make sense to model it like a building. I mean some things you can kind of stretch like the tanks on the oil rig you can kind of stretch and make things with windows and kind of pretend the windows aren't there but a boat that just wouldn't really make that much sense. So what else could there be? It'd be a landing strip or maybe some kind of weather facility. So I know I said this earlier as kind of an idea that I eventually didn't go with but Maybe another kind of mini oil rig somewhere. Like maybe they didn't get all the oil they wanted to the first time, so they had to build a second little side thing over here. Uh, and this one's really going to be small. Like it can just totally be like a supplementary thing to the big one next door. Um, now I, I'm pretty sure this is not how oil rigs work. Like I think that one oil rig can take out the oil from kind of a big area just because they stick a big pipe into the ground or whatever. Um, but maybe there was some kind of special scenario where they didn't realize they'd done it the wrong way the first time, so they had to go a little bit next door and just build some kind of supplementary, I don't know, sand pumping tower or something like that. Um, actually, I don't know why I made a perimeter there. I should make a tower instead. So it's probably like that tall, you know, not super tall, maybe a little bit higher, yeah, not, not that high, and then just goes around like this and the color should be blue um maybe green i haven't really used a lot of green recently no no still blue just dark blue blue and kind of purple that can be a color scheme like that and then yeah those towers are right in the middle which is perfect and then i'll build another layer on top a purple layer um, purple layer will be kind of offset, yeah, a little bit offset, so it's not going to totally follow the exact profile, the exact silhouette of the, of the blue layer. Yeah, maybe it should be a little bit smaller than that. Just so they're not totally in line. And then right in the middle I can have some kind of tower. That can be maybe another boxy, kind of, kind of boxy shape. Actually, this is a good color for the boxy shape, so that the tower can be white. And then the boxy shape can be that dark color that the tower just was. Oh shoot, but the boxy shape has to be kind of big if I, if I don't want it to have a roof, a big peak like that. Unless I connected it. That could be a good idea. Connect it across. And then add a square like that, come down maybe. Um, the tower can move over one one square like this. And this can have a little red, just a little red outpost or something to look over the top. And maybe maybe some people live here, so it's got the same red um, like apartment kind of structure that the other tower had. Perfect. Perfect, okay. So I think it's time for the grand tour. Okay, so we start out with um, the main structure, this big, big oil rig. Uh, this is the part that took the most time, it's got the most components, and uh, let's go for kind of a grand tour of those components. So I guess at the bottom, we have this pipe coming down, and then it splits maybe into a bunch of smaller black pipes that go deep into the ocean, and then whatever, collect oil and suck it up here, um, and then, on these kind of corners we've got the yellow uh these yellow structural buildings the yellow structural buildings don't go all the way to the bottom but they're kind of inspired by a picture that i saw that had yellow supports on all four corners of the tower and i think that that was kind of an interesting look and really looked oil riggy even though you'd normally expect oil rigs to be supported from the middle you know or at least have one big shape coming out of the middle uh, and then the oil comes up this pipe and then it kind of goes through the central area, probably just a bunch of like machinery and stuff and just complicated processing, whatever. And then after that point, it gets stored in these big tanks here that are this kind of dark color on the map. 
Um, now, obviously, these tanks have windows, but I'm kind of hoping that people just ignore those when you look at it and pretend that it's one big mass. Um, it's easy to do that when you zoom out like this because you can kind of see these massive mass shapes rather than the individual, you know, architectural nature of them. And then going around these tanks is this uh, walkway. Now, I don't exactly know what the purpose of the walkway is. Maybe it's just to make sure that the tanks aren't breached or whatever from every direction so people can do walks around the whole area and inspect them. Um, so that's kind of what this walkway is for. It's also a good way of abstracting the shape of the oil rig so that when you look at it, you can kind of see different shapes overlapping each other and nothing kind of standing out as the one main feature, uh, which I think is kind of the point. So then as you kind of follow this walkway along, you pass over this cantilever structure right here, which I'm kind of imagining is a little um, crane that maybe takes small amounts of oil or maybe it's an elevator that takes people up. Basically, the point is that it's not as heavy duty as one of the ones that's like up here, um, which is probably the main thing that will get physical goods and maybe also oil to and from the rest of this rig um, from the from the ocean ocean surface. Then right here, maybe this is a tower that will contain like an elevator to get people to the different levels of the living area, kind of this apartment area over here. Um, let me actually grab this. And then that leads right into the apartment area, which I just mentioned, which is, I don't necessarily know if the living quarters on oil rigs are this large because I don't, I don't necessarily see that many people working at a time on a rig like this. Um, but that's what this is kind of large, but not super bulky. You know what I mean? Like the tanks are very bulky, but this, you know, there's space between them. It's kind of very structural and very, um, not like bony, but just not really hunky and chunky, you know, like the rest of the rig. And then the central feature, um, but not necessarily the most outstanding one is this tower here. Uh, the oil rig towers that you see in pictures are usually very, very structural and they have, they don't really have a lot of these kind of building type tiles. There's more of these um, beams and columns and supports that go all the way up. So to kind of mimic that, but still give it color, I added spaces between these different layers of, of, of the of building so that there's kind of a red and white stripe pattern going all the way up. And then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it reaches the very top square. Perfect. So I think that is pretty much the full tour. Uh, and then there's this blue building right here, which I don't really know exactly what it is. Some kind of other processing thing, not super important. Um, my main goal for making this oil rig was just to kind of give the general vibe in the general kind of structural language rather than go into the details of what each part super, super, super specifically is. So that is the oil rig. Then right next to the oil rig, you have this farm here. Um, I know that there are fish farms, but I don't exactly know if there are fish farms in the ocean. Uh, I'm kind of imagining that this is a fish farm where you've got nets extending from in these kind of squares, one square at a time, going along this path here. And these buildings here are not really buildings, they're just kind of floating supports or something, just so um, the fisher people or whoever is working here have some kind of visual reference for where the corners of each net is. And so these nets I'm kind of imagining are extending deep underwater, um, both protecting the fish from leaving and also protecting them from predator fish that are coming in. So hopefully this is a successful business for these people and then they live they live here they live in this little house this is just like a shed maybe for tools or maybe it's where the boat gets stored overnight actually you know i should probably make a place for the boat to get stored overnight just whatever boat they use to get to and from the rest of the fishery area um let's see maybe i can make it like this but that'll get rid of the staircase and i really like that staircase so maybe on the side here yeah, so they park the boat there overnight um, and they store all the fish in this structure here. So maybe they they park they take the boat underneath 
and they load it into this kind of storehouse, which is small because they probably don't farm that many fish at once. Um, and a boat has to come frequently enough so that the fish in the storehouse don't get like old, obviously, because that's disgusting. Um, and so if the boat is coming often enough and the farm is small enough, the storehouse really does not have to be that large. So the boat will come in into this kind of harborish area, pick up whatever is in the storehouse building, and then leave once again, go back to the mainland. And then here, this is definitely a fictional thing. I don't even know if this would ever exist in real life, but I'm kind of imagining this is right where the Titanic is or some famous boat. Um, and so big groups of tourists will come on big ferry boats from the mainland. Um, I mean, I know that the Titanic is way out in the middle of nowhere, but I'm kind of pretending it's a little bit closer than it actually is. Um, so it's close enough that there can be daily tours going in and out of this structure. So the boat will come in, there's a little harbor here, tourists will enter, go up these stairs here, enter the building at the top, there's this door, and then there's like a museum, maybe there's a movie, typical stuff for a historical site. And then from there you take maybe an underwater elevator or a submarine or something that will take you directly underwater. And this kind of square shape is like the perimeter of maybe the only allowable area that people are allowed to go into to look at the Titanic. Because obviously, if you just let people go wherever they want underneath the water, they're probably going to get lost. Uh, and nobody wants to get lost in the middle of this ocean. It's huge. So it's kind of limited. Maybe there's a net around this, just so they can find all the people, basically. And then maybe I can make a more solid elevator going actually right down into the water. So I'm kind of imagining that goes down, 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 down. And then maybe there's an underwater area where you get into a submarine, or maybe that's just how you view it. You know, you go down, 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 there's an underwater building that maybe has like a glass floor or something, and then underneath that is the boat. Anyway, however you think that the business works where they safely get people to and from the site of the sunken Titanic that is at this building. And then over here, you've got one supplementary kind of oil rig thing. I'm kind of imagining that maybe this oil rig needed to somehow pipe oil through this section and couldn't do it through this column here. Maybe there's something obstructing its way or maybe the place where this pipe went into the ground, maybe that place collapsed and they had to build a new area over here. Whatever the reason, this is like a small kind of sister rig to this one. So it has a lot of the same main components where you've got like a residential area over here, which has some apartments and things like that for the employees to live in. I should let me make that a little bit more regular looking. And then here you've got one of these big storehouse things, um, big relative to the oil rig, but small relative to these ones. And then kind of a central tower here, a lookout area, maybe an office up here. Um, and then, some kind of structural machinery whatever stuff down there so that's kind of the structure of that building so those are the buildings that i'm imagining are in the middle of the ocean i know that this is not factually accurate but really none of my videos have ever been factually accurate so whatever um so i appreciate you actually spending time watching this whole video um and now i think it's time to give this whole build a rating now, I would probably say it gets a plus one for leaning into the water concept in Townscaper when a lot of my previous builds haven't. Uh, it gets a plus one for simplicity and time. really didn't take me a whole lot of time to do this compared to my other builds, which really took a hefty amount of time and effort and a lot of, a lot of clicking. A lot of my other builds just took a lot of clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking and making like a mountain or something or a big hive and just endless 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 clicking so i appreciate how simple this was um i think it was a pretty creative use of the townscaper blocks so plus one for that uh i'm using them all in pretty different ways and kind of imagining them to be things they aren't which i do like and a plus one for just being kind of monumental i mean look at that oil rig like i've never made anything that's that really grand towering over everything else. I just think it looks so cool. 
and then I would get a minus one for environmental degradation directly on top of a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, and also a minus one for inventing businesses that definitely don't exist, uh, which are my Titanic Tourist Center and my middle of nowhere fishing farm. So overall, this build gets a strong seven. Well, that's it, folks. <laughs> Thanks for listening.